for a4, then you have more uh, options. You can play bishop g4, you can play bishop d7, and if you castle immediately, then after a4, you have to, to play something like rook b8. It's another story, of course. Yes, so I play d6, c3, castle, and d4. That played was me Vasyukov. Uh, my first Soviet championship, 1974, he played this. It was not v uh, very often played at that time. Okay, I knew that I was still uh, I am. Uh, so I played bishop g4. Usually the people play, mostly they play bishop e3, uh, d5, knight a5. It's a well-known position. Bishop c2, c6, h3. I I was not sure, but I could remember a little bit that according to the opening theory, to Yug according to Yugoslavian uh, 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 Encyclopedia of Chess openings, it's not very good. I thought it's not very good uh, uh, because of the game um, Stein-Gelder. So it was uh, because uh, it's not uh, h3 was uh, was evaluated as uh, not a very good move because of uh, bishop takes just was the game queen takes cd5 ed5 ed5 and rook c8 and according to the Encyclopedia of openings, uh, the black is better here. Black is better, and actually, uh, Stein lost in 15 moves this game. Knight d2 and g6. Simply, and there is not nice, this pawn is weak on d5. <coughs> it was played uh, bishop d3. He wanted to prevent. Also before maybe also wanted to prevent knight c knight c4 and just knight h5 bring a better to better position a bishop and after a4 he plays f5 and black is very good and quickly he, he won the game this one because this, uh, the best structure is to push a pawn. And when Vasyukov played versus me this, um, I did not remember exactly, but it's, I thought that it should not be good, according to the theory, if I, I should just take. But I must say I was not sure if it's so good or not good, what he did prepare, and... I, I made a very bad move, bishop d7. Of course, I saw knight e5, but I thought that knight takes e5. The pawn still on g7. Yes, are you sure? Yeah, right. Yes. Uh, and so I saw that that after knight takes e5. Pawn takes e5, d6, and bishop e6. I thought that's okay, it must be very good for black because I am developed. All the pieces are already developed. The problem of this position is that it's very difficult for black to improve the, the position because they brought all the pieces in the game, but what to do later? That was a problem because of this uh, lack of a black squared bishop. And this, okay, maybe I could play better, of course. It's true, but uh, queen f3, he played rook d8, queen g3, and there is a little bit problems for me. I played knight d7. He played b3 and slowly getting 
advantage. I played before. Because if I play no, I sorry, it was c5, b3, c5, knight d2. The problem for black is that they have they have to do something, not clear what to do. For for white is very clear what they they can bring a knight here or they can bring a knight here. Uh, once, once there are some threats with bishop, and also this can be weak. This is dangerous because it's immediately coming to a4. And then I, I tried somehow to occupy d4 square, and I played b4 to come with a knight to d4. But just take and uh, now now I uh, I cannot bring my knight here. Just played knight c3, rook c8, and now he's winning a tempo with bishop h6, forcing me to play f6 and rook c1, and that is often happened in uh, in real opposite position that the, the stupid knight on a5. You cannot bring this knight to a to good position anymore. Would be good to come here to d4, but because on, on c5 it's also shaky. So, I played knight c5. If I play, for instance, knight c6, he can bring, bring a bishop here to c4. So I played... Uh, knight c5 immediately, stopping, but now there are uh, two, two stupid knights there. So, and that's bishop b1. So, knight c6 is not possible anymore. Played knight a b7. Uh, if knight d3 would be Rook c8, rook c8, rook c8, no, 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 knight d3 is not possible. What is that? Knight d3. Ah, rook c8, rook c8, bishop c8, yes. Rook c8, bishop c8, but then just rook d1. And mate on g7. So, so I, I had problems with this both knights. What to do? I played here. Uh, bishop a to b7. Sometimes the, the people say that the problem of two knights is yeah, that uh, they have to come to, to the same square. Yeah, for, for two knights there, is not enough, there are not enough squares for both knights mostly. That's why, why for instance even bishop and Knight is better than two knights, because two knights, they can defend themselves, but they can, they, mostly in the open position, they have not, not squares where to come. Every is hanging. So, and knight, and just bishop e3 back. And now is another one knight is there. Ah, there is, there is a rook, rook is like that, sorry. Yes, and if knight d3 now, that will be more or less the same, taken on, on c8. Maybe it was better to play something like that. Play this, take, take, rook d1, and to come with another knight here. But still, it's, uh, this knight is not so safe. Both the knights are not safe. Always some tricks with. So, and I did not do it, of course. I played hmm, a5. a5. He played knight h4. You know, it's difficult to play because when you have to find everything during the game to find uh, the best moves and you are a little bit tired already. So... And because you have to defend, knight, knight is coming here to f5 one moment. 
Uh, uh, before I played a5 and knight h4, yes. And knight d3. Still I could play maybe a4 immediately. And after knight f5 just to move a queen back. I have, to, uh, because bishop g6, bishop h6 is possible, and then, but then he takes on f5, yes. So it's, it still was better, but I played the wrong way. I played here something like uh, knight d3. In this moment I played knight d3. This is the rook here. Knight d3, rook takes, uh, bishop takes, I think. Yes, it's first. So, and... Uh, and rook, rook f1. Because after rook d1, there would be some ideas like knight f4. Rook d1 would be possible that was what I wanted to do. Because later there's, there's a check there. S would be would be okay. Ah, even oh, even knight knight b2 also possible here to change this rook immediately. That's why he played rook f1 here. <coughs> Still everything hanging. Queen uh, c7. Maybe bishop e6 was better to move back. I tried to do something to get there. And now king h2 is very good prophylactic move that there will be no checks anymore. Knight b c5. Knight b c5 and I was surprised why the two bishops are better than two knights? Because it's always possible to give a bishop for a knight. And mostly it's more difficult to give a knight for a bishop. Yes. And he just took here. Knight takes. And I think rook c1. Now I should play rook d6, which is, which is a unpleasant, of course, but still possible to fight. Queen e3, queen e rook d6, rook c6, something like that. I blundered here. It's normal, it's normal when you are defending all the time, sooner or later you blunder something. And especially, I sh I'm sure I was in time trouble already, despite we had two and a half hours for 40 moves that time. I played bishop e6 and lost immediately after queen e3, rook c8, and I sent bishop d3. And bishop d3. Now it's bishop a6 a threat. And uh, how to defend the position? Because also Queen e7 would be knight e f f5. And then again. Or even bishop c4 also very strong because there, there is never any checks here. So he, I played something like g5, I think. Yeah. Desperately move because nothing to do. So, and bishop a6 is winning. Bishop a6, rook here, rook takes, queen e7, I think, and rook c6, and the game is over. And I resigned here. So, but, you know, you, you always have to learn something from your defeat. Especially when you, if you are still young, and you have a time and motivation. So you need both time and motivation, and then you can improve. So I just go back to the position. 
after the championship, after the tournament, I scored well. I shared five to seven, which was for the first time playing so the championship was very, very good for me. So and but I prepared for next one. At almost one year. For okay, not only for this, but for everything. Yes, but also this. I started to consider what what would happen if I would if I would follow the recommendation of salary if and if I'm in this position, this is this. Bishop G4, actually, this is, uh, that is compulsory move D5. That's why many people play here Bishop, uh, after Bishop G4, Bishop E3, many people play. But D5, mm, uh, actually, um, Bishop E3 was more popular at that time. Uh, d5, knight a5, and bishop c2, and c3, h, uh, c6, h3. By the way, I tell you that now almost everybody plays bishop c8. But at that time, middle of 70s, it was a compulsory move to take on f3. So, and uh, uh, that the... Uh, that could happen. Bishop d7 I played. Yes, what was not uh, successful for me, not good. And I just considered what, what uh, actually Vasyuko prepared for me, because he should prepare something. He would not play without preparation. It was serious tournament and was was another time. But they're not in open tournaments, you can play every, almost everything. That time, usually, I tell you, when I prepared for the Soviet championship, I knew all the participants before, few months before. And I didn't know only what I will do if I will play uh, with black pieces or with white pieces. It was usually 16 or 18 participants, 15 or 17 rounds. So, and... Uh, for instance, when I played many times, I played uh, versus Gelder. For instance, I played many games D4, also in team competitions. And uh, usually Gelder and Belarski, uh, they played uh, Queen's Gambit protocol system, H6 and uh, and B6. So, and I prepared. I tried to um, versus Gelder uh, different. Uh, options and uh, prepared sometimes this sometimes that that uh, so also i would i prepared that time uh, also i played versus geller uh, or belavsky sometimes we played catalan also when i had white if i was black it was real lopez usually i played that time only real lopez uh, and that time played already played zaitsev system before no, uh, 78, I still played versus the other ones, Breyer system, and I lost. I remember it was team competition. So, and now I considered, I had time, I was sitting home, I checked again the, uh, the book, there were no computers at that time, nothing, of everything in books. Uh, I, I saw that, okay, the, uh, the regulation is uh, that the black is better. But he had to prepare something. And I started to uh, to analyze this position and to uh, try to fight some ideas. And um, later, uh, uh, later next year, Vasiko played this, the same position versus Lothar Fort, a German grandmaster, and he had completely another idea than me. So uh, I didn't know what, 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 what he prepared. I could not ask him this. So, and now later I discovered that his idea was, his intention was completely different than mine. But I find it here a very interesting uh, pawn uh, sacrifice. And I played versus Geller in the next Soviet championship. Only, only maybe I, I played another move order 
just one moment maybe i played another move order tell you why because Geller could play mm, mm, martial attack it was in his his style so i played i played here so in this position I played d4 immediately here, which is possible. So, if he takes on d4, I like this with, with e5 with positions, yes. And uh, and and if he, and probably next one here versus Carpo also I uh, I chose that uh, move order because Carpo worked a lot with Geller. Despite it's not in in Carpo's character to uh, to play martial attack. But who knows? You have to, you have to be uh, aware of everything. So he played Geller played d6, c3, bishop g4, d5, knight a5. And of course, he had a good, a good experience already. He won versus Stein. So c6, h3. Uh, Queen takes, take, take, and he played immediately. Knight c4, knight d2. I think that uh, uh, Vasikov versus Fork played something like b3. And, and then I had this funny idea just to, to give up a pawn on, on d5. That was a novelty to that, uh, that time, 1975. Next year, uh, I played the same position with Scarpo, he did not take, and nobody did, did, uh, did take a pawn anymore on d5. Geller was, uh, he underestimated me, because I was young, uh, not grandmaster yet, and he was very known, experienced, and he just looked at me a little bit surprisingly and took a pawn. The same happened actually in that tournament, I introduced two novelties. Uh, two novelties versus uh, Geller and versus Petrosian. Tiran Petrosian, who won that, that Soviet championship, he won uh, the tournament and he lost only one game versus me. That I, uh, I invented this one uh, with uh, English opening with bishop d3 when the pawn is on, on, on d2 and later sacrificed a knight on d5. And that was the same problem was with uh, uh, for, for Petrosian as for Geller, they underestimated my ideas, my preparation. They both underestimated that, and and now he took, and I just played knight g3. It's funny because you don't have you don't have uh, threats immediately, but it's the position is a little bit unpleasant for Black. Because uh, it's like uh, in my in, in previous game was very unpleasant uh, for, for me when I played with black. The only was different that white has uh, black has a pawn, uh, is a pawn up, but there is a threat always threat knight f five. So you, you came up with this idea yourself at home. Okay. At home, I prepared it at home. Really. Al alone, or did you check alone, it? alone with check with what? <laughs> 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 Uh, some colleague, I mean, some chess players. Uh, you know, that, that, that's a problem because once I played another one idea, uh, whether it was year I think seventy three or something, two years earlier, I played uh, an interesting idea in Blitz game uh, versus uh, Belavsky. Idea, just idea with uh, pawn sacrifice, and few months later, he he. He played this idea versus King Terras and won. And the problem is, no, okay, now it's much more worse than that time. Because now every, if you introduce any novelty, everybody who, who wants to know will know it in the same evening. <coughs> yes. And earlier it was not like that. Even earlier you, you could use it for a long time. Because no computers, not, me, not so, okay, it comes in a chess magazine, maybe will be published, maybe not, maybe with some annotations, maybe without, 
maybe you will find it, maybe you will see it, maybe you will miss it, this game, like, and so, and, but if you, if you are professional, you know, when you, you can do it, you can check it, everything only with, uh, with your, for instance, your second who is, uh, uh, who is preparing, the, uh, working with you, because other people will, will, will play it immediately, and you, 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 you will not use it anymore. So, so I, ch I just analyze this position. That is the typical idea is what I, I made this, uh, I, I did make it many times, sacrificing a pawn almost for nothing. Not, not concrete variations, not uh, attack, nothing, just initiative, long initiative. And it is very difficult to, mm, uh, to defend because the people get, have a pawn up. Now they, they are thinking, what they have to do with this pawn? Should they give up back pawn? But it is, uh, but maybe they will give me back pawn, but I will still keep initiative. So they, usually they don't, the people don't know what to do with this pawn. To play for, for advantage, to play for draw, to find. And now in this moment he started to think a lot. Lo uh, very long he started to think because he doesn't know what to do because this knight is shaky here and knight f5 is, is always a threat and uh, the threat is um, the s stronger than execution of this threat no he has, he has to do he has to know what can he play um, if he play g6 and bishop h6 and bishop b3 and f7 will be weak immediately and knight f5 some threats he never can push d pawn because e5 is hanging what he what he has to do to keep a knight on d on d5 it's not he played here so just a moment he played knight c7 For instance, if he would play uh, g6, then knight f5, I think, immediately. No, rook e8. If, if he plays rook e8, knight f5, bishop f8, for instance, bishop b3, knight is moving and and already is, is bishop g5. And simple threat, knight h6. So. Knight d7 here? Uh, no, e7, on, instead of d7. Ah, knight e, here you mean? Yeah. Then knight h6. Uh, knight, h6. knight h6 would be immediately. It's very, 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 very difficult position now. So he played here. I think he played knight c7. Knight c7 he played. And I did not play immediately uh, knight f5. Not. He has to think about it. I will use one moment when to play knight f5 and to win immediately. First I want to improve my bishop. Making some weaknesses on his... The rook is sometimes hanging already on a8. Bishop is on c2, right? Bishop is on c2 still, yes. You are right. Bishop on c2. Pawn takes a4. And bishop takes a4. And now again, he cannot play g6 because he has not a square e8 anymore for the rook. So what to do? And he cannot push d5. Nothing. So, but he defended himself and was, clo was close to, to draw. But that is a game, you know, because what I mean, this is a game that everybody makes mistakes. It's difficult to play without mistake, difficult to defend the position because you are tired, you are, you are um, not satisfied with your position, you are tired, you get in time trouble, and that's normal. Rook b8, no, I played b4, just to make a space and uh, also to uh, 
that I can move now, now the, uh, the bishop from C1. Knight F to E8, he wants to how some, somehow to push. He wants to push a five in a moment. Not immediately, of course, but he is preparing this. Now, if you just look at the position, white has clear, clear advantage here. You see, it's a lot of problems, so very bad pieces. Pawn on A6 is weak, pawn on D6 is weak, very weak white squares. Now I played bishop E3. I'm not sure that it was played the best way now. Bishop E3, and he played at least knight B5. Bishop C2. Played bishop C2. And he cannot, I think he cannot take on C3. Because if he takes on C3 now, I have this idea. Oh, sorry. Bishop A7. And if rook A8, then bishop B6. Rook is hanging. And if rook C8, now bishop F5. Yeah, it could, be, it could be possible to play now rook a1, bishop b6, here rook c1 now. And if knight b5, bishop e4 back. And rook is lost there. So he played... Uh, he played rook c8 the bishop c2. No, bishop, uh, I played bishop c2 and he played rook c8 immediately. Maybe now I was not precise. It's clear I was not precise here the, in that game. Okay, I did not analyze so much before. Only only finishing after knight, F, knight g3 and uh, a4. That was enough. That was enough. I took on... Here, here he had good chances to make a draw. But only to make a draw. I took on a6. He took by rook. Here. Rook a8. Queen c7. Queen d5. I wanted to uh, to push my pass pawn. If he takes now on c2, I would take here. Knight f6. Maybe just rook a1. Seems I have uh, good chances here. Because bishop on e seven is is bad, it's always knight f five and pass pawn is pass pawn, and his king is not safe, anyway. But in this moment he had a very good option here, not when bishop was on c two after queen d five. He had a very good option here. Knight is one is here. He had knight d4 here. That was the best way to play. Knight d4 from here. Not to take this bishop, but to play knight d4. And only after bishop taking d4, now to take this. There's a difference because now now my bishop is hanging. He is winning a tempo with this. And also he has rook c1. So, and that was the, be uh, the best way for him to play. Bishop e3, now I have to go back. And that is 
that's how he how he save a tempo oh what else rook c8 was also possible rook a7 is possible also rook a7 but maybe he can play rook rook e rook c1 now after rook a7 so i if i play bishop e3 now he has time for knight f6 at least I have to take on f8. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Queen b5. And now immediately d5. And that is not so bad. Bishop g5. Probably. And queen, queen c3. Now. Queen c3. But I will still try somehow to to play with my pawn on b but but he has chances here for to, to make a draw finally what but he missed it by to take by king would be worse because king would be on f8 very bad Instead of this, he played knight f6. Instead of taking on... Ah, he, instead of... Uh, after queen d5, he did not play... After queen d5, he did not play knight d4. But he played here knight f6. That is knight f6, yeah? This is... And knight, I think, is here. Like that, and no, it's queen c7, rook c3, and bishop on c2. A knight is a knight f6. He played rook takes f8. If he takes by king, then queen takes, king takes, queen takes b5, rook takes, rook a1 is very, very dangerous for king. He took by bishop, and now it's bishop takes h2. Now the pawns are equal. Knight king takes. Uh, queen b5. You look on e1, I think. Yes, look on e1. So that's what we are talking. We are talking about that now. Now he gave back a pawn, but still has problems. Now he could still have five. He could still have good chances for a draw if he would push Im immediately d5, and after bishop g5, to immediately to attack my pawns on on b4. And now to take on c6 is not in, uh, on c4 is not enough because rook takes take on e5. No, this is slightly maybe better, but but not much. Probably draw. This take take oh, sorry take bishop d6 bishop takes. And this is a draw. And later he just takes on g3, that is a draw. So, it means that I would have to, to play or queen b5, or, and then he takes on, on and, and then he takes on, on b4 with a bishop. And he would have a good chances here. In this position, he would have bishop g5, queen, queen c4. My rook is here, I think. And now knight is on f6. Rook on c d5, bishop c5. And now he could play queen c4. 
and queen b7 and then he can take I think by bishop queen b7 uh, now queen b7 is possible yes or queen if queen b8 instead queen b7 then bishop takes here that's why bishop queen b7 may be better because this and there is a threat rook takes g3 unfortunately there is a threat like that a rook takes e5 and rook takes g3 a rook takes g3 a pawn takes and knight e4 and seems to be okay for him yeah now my pieces are discoordinated so but but uh, everybody makes mistakes and especially already in time trouble after such a long game and difficult game and he made another one mistake he played in this position He played in this position. Oh, my pawn is on before. He did not play. He did not play this. Ooh. Queen on b5. Ah, he did not play d5. I think he did not. So my bishop is still here. Rook on c. Rook c3. Pawn here. Queen is on b5. That's like that. I think. Yeah. Knight on g3. Yes. Knight on g3. And he's, there are lot, also a lot of variation. He played here king g8 back. Um, question. Yeah. Anyone having any uh, jacket in the club room? And the king on, on g8 is not safe. He played king g8, a rook a1. And now he played d5, but it would be better to win a temple to, to do it one move before. Rook a7, queen c4, and queen b8 now. He played d4. If he would, he would play here queen b4, and then queen e5. And knight f5. And he cannot improve the position. There is, there is very dangerous on the king side already. So. And now a queen b1, then king h2. And if queen b4, b, queen b8 here, then bishop d4 also possible, just to play this. And later he has, he will lose a pawn, at least one. If he loses a pawn and gives me options to, to double him pawn, then, then it's, it's lost position with that bishop. But it's still possible, maybe it's still possible to, to defend some. Uh, also was rook b8 was interesting here not queen b8 but rook b8 another option would be here this queen on b1 let me say this position rook b8 trying somehow to to play rook, b, rook b7 so but he played d4 and d4 is losing immediately after I think it's losing. Let me see. Rook C. Still I have a pawn. 
Uh -huh. He has a queen here. I have a pawn here. He played uh, d4. In this position, my queen is on e8. So, the knight is on, on g3 still. And that is. He played d4, knight g5. Bishop g5. Bishop is controlling the d2 square if he plays like d3 j just to take on on e5. Queen e6 maybe was still possible. I ah, know if queen e6 then take take and rook a8 queen e7 and knight f5 is losing it's losing a bishop so and now it's time for knight f5 not in the beginning nine, no yes <laughs> <laughs> so you know i did not play knight f5 yeah. all the time i did not play it but now because sometimes you play knight f5 and then later you have to move back to g6 after some moment g6 you have to keep it keep the threat always so he played not this he played what he did Be after bishop g5 he played knight h7 queen on c4 so he played here knight h7 and then I, queen was on b oak on a7 and i think bishop e7 could be Bishop e7, yes. Bishop e7. He played d3. Queen c8 was another option, but queen c8 is just taken on e5, and, and all the threats are the same. Queen e6, bishop takes f8, would be. So he played. Uh, d3 just take knight takes and rook a8 and mating d2 d2 queen takes king here I st ah check check and check yeah. and queen f5 and finally resigned. Yeah. So that was uh, my novelty, and I introduced uh, two novelties in the tournament. But Petrosian, who won the Soviet championship, it was my my best Soviet championship, seventy five, told me, you introduced two novelties. It's very good. It's very good. But the, the tournament consists of not of these two games, but of certain other games. So what he said to me. <laughs> <laughs> so he lost one game only to me in that championship. So, and now we go back next uh, next year, exactly the Soviet championship next year. I wanted to play the same variation versus Karpov. That this idea was played many times already uh, with uh, the pawn sacrifice and they tried a new option they did not they did not take it immediately so it was with Karpov by the way Karpov won that championship he lost he won eight games I think yes and lost one to Geller only so and I played a crazy championship. I won seven games, only less less than Karpov, but lost seven games too, <laughs> and made three draws. So the more than me won only Karpov, but less than me uh, uh, more than me lost only Kuprecha, who was on the bottom. <laughs> so this was a strange very strange i started with two defeats and then 
uh, to Dorfman I lost and to Smyslov first. Then I won three games in the row, was a Stahl, was Sveshnikov and uh, Alexander Zakharov. And then started shaking always. Win, lost, win, lost, win, lost, every day the same. So, and one was very interesting game was versus Kapo. Of course I played for win. By the way, I have a worse score versus all against all the world champions champions versus Karpov. I lost seven games and seven draws. Never won. Because I tell you, because when I played Petrosian, Spassky, uh, Smyslov, uh, mm, Tal, they were going a little bit down already from their peak. And with Karpov, we are the same age. It means his best years and my best years are also. My best years were his best years, so I could not win. Once I had, once I had possibility, I had a pawn up after 40 moon. It was in Tilburg, it was knockout system, Tilburg matches. I played seven, second round, I think, versus Karpov, or third round, I don't remember exactly. I, wa I had white, and after 40 moon, I was pawn up. And, but I could not win in this end game. But the Scarpo was always very difficult to win. And and I'm he defended very well and he made a draw and next and next day he has beaten me with white pieces already. So but that was the only once I had a chance to win. Never more. Because this position, this game was very, very uh, hmm. Sharp game, but not clear that, that that I could win somehow. I don't know. Oh, so this is this. So you see the the variation is like that. A uh, knight d two, and he played knight b six. Ah, yes, this is this. Rook is on a eight. eight. I think this is the position, yes? A knight f1. So. And Karpov tried the way uh, the, play, uh, the people did, did do that time. He played knight e8. That was a new idea. Actually, it was played already before. Yes, that's after my game versus Keller, they tried to First, they wanted to prepare everything on king side to play g6, f5, bishop f6, and attacking the pawn from, from c7 with the knight. Not to take immediately a knight. Then it's more difficult for white to, to get uh, some initiative and not no attack anymore. And because somehow, you know, when it, uh, once, I, once I won a game, won a pawn, something on d5, versus Bologan with black. And after I won I won a pawn, his bishop became stronger. Sometimes it's not <laughs> it's better to, to to leave a pawn. So he played this. But of course there is now knight knight g three is nothing now. G six just simply. And knight to g seven if bishop h six. But here is the time for people to play a four. In my opinion, here would be better uh, to take by knight on a uh, to by pawn on a4. That would force me to take by bishop immediately. Because he he took by knight, uh, and I took by if if knight, I would I was I would be forced to to take twice, and he took by knight. And now I have option. I am not forced to take immediately that pawn. And uh, I want to mention that Grandmaster Gufeld played in some games like that here. Yeah. Many people tried to play this uh, and took by that rook. And immediately doubling a rook because there is a problem to how to double a rook when the bishop will not see one. So that is interesting to take by that rook. 
So, but I, t I did not take at all. I play just now knight e3. Now, now is knight e3 possible? Not only f5, but also to c4. One moment. G6. And now, the, now there is nothing to do on king side. I am not a, a pawn down, so I can play. Still, knight c4. Knight c4, he played f5. And rook takes a4 now. Because I have knight b6. <coughs> now he played knight c7. And here is my mistake in this position. I made a mistake. What is better? for white to have a rook, a black rook should be on f8 or f7. It's not easy decision. <laughs> a rook on f7 for black is better. But I was wrong, I played bishop h6. And then bishop e3, I should play immediately bishop. Or even not bishop, uh, should play knight a5 immediately. Oh, here, to come to c6. That is the best. Instead of this, that is the best. Knight a5, knight c6, and to keep a rook there, on, on a rank. I played this wrong move, forcing him to play here, and now, because I thought that sometimes I will take somewhere on e5, maybe, and rook on a8 can be handy also. But it, uh, it could happen 10 moves later, but uh, not, not now. So, bishop e3, queen e8. So, rook a5. The, because he wants to come with the queen to b5. I have to prevent this. Knight b6 would be not good. It would be 8 and then queen is, uh, and rook will be handy. So I played rook a5 and now he plays rook b8. Still wants to play rook b5. If b4, then rook b5, and like equal. I played bishop b6 here, forcing him to go to a8. Knight a8, bishop a7, rook b7, and now Bishop e3. Why I did not? Ah, I cannot take on a6 because queen b5 again. So, and now bishop e3. At least I, I force him to, to push pieces back. Now, now he has to go knight c7. So the same position only, only with difference that rook is on b7, not on b8. Ah, but now that's what I saw, I saw that because I have always these ideas with both and queen, queen d1 later. And now, now I have knight e5. Knight e5. He took by pawn and d6. But e4. E4, I will queen D1. Still, bishop D8 is very good move. Bishop is coming to this diagonal, and my king will be will have problem. Also, he's supporting F4 later. Bishop F8, DC7. Bishop c7. 
And you see, if rook would be on a8, one moment I could have a check later. One moment I could have a check. But I thought that it's better for me that because eight rank is weak, actually. No, not immediately check because queen f7 and then he has this one. Still. But now I took on, on a8. Now a6 and he took on, on b2. Boom. <coughs> Ah, if I would play, in, if I would here play, if I would not take, where was my rook here? Yeah, if I would play here a rook, a2 seems to be good, but he has immediately queen d5, queen e5. That's why bishop is very strong. Queen e5 and g3. Uh, queen e6, attacking everything, a2, defending a6, and f4, h3 is weak, immediately. And after queen, and if I play queen a4, just f4, and black is better. His king is safe. So, uh, because of that I took on a6, he took on b2, so in this position, where was his queen? On e8, yes, I took there and he took there. Pawn on g2? Pawn on g2, yes. <coughs> and, oh, if w w now would be also queen d5 possible. Here I played queen a1. Because queen d5 would queen e5 immediately. Queen d5, queen e5. Rook a8 and going back a rook. And white is not better, of course. Nothing. Just a draw. That's why bishop here is very strong on this diagonal. So I played instead of this. Queen a1. I played queen a1 here. Rook is on a6. Queen is there. And he moved the rook back. Rook back. A rook b1. Okay, and now, now we'll see. I have to be careful here. Not to lose the game. My king is in danger. Yeah. I wanted to change a rook, at least that uh, a rank will be weak for him. His then his king is, is not strong when, when I change. Rook b1, f4. Played f4, bishop d4, and he played e3 immediately. And my rook is doing nothing on a6. Just nothing. My king is in danger. No. I played rook e1 back. I was afraid of this. And if he takes on f2. Your bishop from b8 will also close uh, a rank. So I played rook e1. And b now he plays bishop e5. Seems that black is slightly better already. Queen a2, but without check. You see, I should have this check always. <laughs> I should keep it. So queen a two, 
e two con d4, c d4, and two con f2, queen f2, and queen d7 with some threats like f3. Uh, look f8 another. Uh, I close diagonal. I will play rook a6. Rook e6. And he played rook b3. And now is important move rook 1 to 4 to e4 and this was in this moment uh, the game was adjourned you know that it was playing with adjournments after four after five hours not exactly 40 moves but five hours of course you have to make 40 moves before after five hours exactly then the game should be adjourned and we agreed a draw without continuing because it was analysis, uh, e easy for analyzing. F3, he would play here F3, just taken on F3. Rook, and doesn't matter which one. Sorry? Yes. If Rook takes uh, Rook F to F3, then rook e8 king f7 and then is there is this move important very important move this now he has to give the check on g3 king f1 rook here and king e1. Rook, rook g1 must be played. Uh, king d2 is not, not, queen is coming. Let's draw. Like that. If he takes by this rook. If he takes by another rook, it's much more easier. But it was easy for for analyzing because everything is forced. There are no, no other options. Uh, if you would take by this rook, and then I think just ah uh, simply rook b f three rook e eight uh, rook e eight and just take it here. And, and draw. This or that, it doesn't matter which one it is. Just, just draw. So that's why we did not continue. It was normal that time when it was, uh, we had, a, for adjournment, we had a special day. So we, di we did not continue the same evening. We had a special day and we had enough time but sometimes if you have many adjournments, that is a problem. Once in uh, 85, in Sonal tournament in Erevan, I had five adjournments. And I had to play all them next day, in, in a special day. Five games was adjourned because one game where uh, Tukmakov was sick and our game was postponed and was adjourned. Actually, we played 120 moves later at all. So I had... Uh, five adjournments and then I had to analyze it. I had a second, uh, Arshak Petrosyan, GM now, is uh, father-in-law of Leko. So, and he helped me, I slept few hours, only slept few hours and then, then the adjournments, all the adjournments were played for six hours. But, uh, at least two hours should be till the end that a new game will be started. 
Ah, so you had one opponent finish and then the, the new opponents just keep on coming? <laughs> no, no, but no, they are waiting. Yeah. The same was happened to me that I had to wait yeah. for other people. Uh, you know, when I played one game, I finished one and then I played next second one versus Don Martov. It was a draw, but I was just slightly better because I had a pair of bishops and he had bishop and knight or something. I could make a draw any moment when I wanted, but I watched on my watch. And when I saw that it's le less, and then I have a uh, half an hour break, uh, so after the game, to start a new one. When I saw there is less than, than two hours, then I uh, accepted a draw. Because I, had, I was completely finished, I could not play next, next game anymore. I did not sleep at all, almost. And then we started, and then next three rounds, and I got uh, two adjournments again. And I had, next time, I had uh, gained five adjournments. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very hard, but usually, professionally, you should, in such situation, you should do what? If, when it's lost, the game is lost, you, sh you, you have to resign. When it's draw, you have to accept the draw. You have to reduce the games. But my problem was it was zonal tournament, qualification for interzonal tournament, and Somehow I needed half a point more. Somewhere, somewhere to find this half a point because actually at the end, uh, at all the games, my adjournments finished like it should, they should finish. And I was half a point behind, <laughs> behind qualification. So, so, but, and then I had this uh, few games, adjournments, I had five adjournments. And then before, because the rule is that the, before the last round, all the games should be finished, all the, so. And later I had to play on the, uh, on the rest day, I had to play my adjournments, and also on other days in the morning I had to play two hours my adjournments, still, because everything, it was very, very hard. But I would say that when you, from adjournments, from analyzing, you can learn a lot. You can really, really learn a lot. But there, excuse me, there were not computers that time. So you now it's not possible because uh, computer will analyze. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, wh when there is an adjournment. Yes. Again, you have to first write your move. Yes, seal it move. It, seal it. Yes. So you have to decide your move. Yes. In the time. Yes. Then. That is that is why Be from one side that I have to do this move now. Yes. From another side, my opponent doesn't move. Yeah. Which move? Yeah, he, he can guess. He can guess, but sometimes, sometimes it's really you know. It, if you are winning, if you win, then you have winning position. Then it's better just to, just to seal the move, which is normal move uh, without any decision, and then you are winning. Or he will resign even maybe. Maybe he will not continue. <laughs> or but if he has, if he has a difficult uh, situation, it would be better to give him this opportu uh, opportunity to seal the move. You have to make your last move the right moment. Before the, ah. uh, before. And I made one mis once this mistake. It was during the Olympiad. I played the Romanian international master Ginda, Mikha Ginda. And uh, it was in Olympiad 78, Buenos Aires. And I wanted him to seal the move because uh, the move was very important. And I made the move, and he replied immediately. And now I have to seal the move. And that was very important, decisive move was that, mm -hmm. that moment. I spent 40 mo minutes for this, because the next time control was one hour for 16 moves after that. So it's not, it's always a little bit, it's a game, you know, it's also, it belongs also to the game, to seal your move or to, to give to your opponent this uh, possibility, it's, it's a game. So, and now I would like to show you another one game of the same opening. I played uh, uh, Grandmaster Predrag Nikolic. It was year 71, no, uh, 91, it was Yugoslavia um, Cup, 
team club, I played for Croatia club, and he played for Serbian club, I think, yes. So, that was the position. Mm -hmm. This like that, that, that. No. Boom. <coughs> Boom. You know what's happened once to to one lady from uh, my home uh, city, from Lviv, Litinska, or earlier she was uh, named Shul. Yes, she uh, she had completely winning position, completely. There was no m no move that he, she could uh, miss a win. Nothing, nothing, no, uh, even theoretically nothing. He, she could not blunder anything, nothing. And she wrote a move and put it at in his back, in her back. The score sheet put it at her back. So it means there are no moves. And But she was fighting, at that moment she was fighting for, for first place in the Soviet championship. So she uses the game because she didn't have the move? Yes, she did not move. Okay. She did not move, actually. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, she put it on her back. Incredible, eh? Okay, it was, yeah. a, it was a little bit mistake of, of the arbiter. He should check if both uh, score sheets are in the in the envelope, because both score sheets should be there inside. And he did not do it, but okay, she she lost. You can also you, you uh, to okay. It was once you know it was a little bit misunderstanding between in the match between Petrosian and Botvinnik. Because Petrosian was writing something seven, eight, like seven, like eight, or eight, like seven, mostly like that. And uh, Botvinnik insisted that it is not eight, but seven, or something like that. But I better decided on in favor of Petrosian. So sometimes it's, it's also possible to make an open move. You just make a move, like open move. So that is the game. So you, that you, you don't make any mi mistake by sealing this move. Because if you seal the, the impossible move, mm -hmm. which is impossible, you are losing this. Even if your opponent did resign in the meantime, oh. anyway, the arbiter should check the envelope. Yeah. And if, uh, if it's an impossible move or if there is no move, then you lose again. Even your opponent accepted the draw in the meantime, doesn't matter. They have to check always the move. So. Well, that is this. So if you get into the wings, it's probably a moving board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think knight is on F1. Somewhere. Something is wrong. <coughs> ah, no, there is not a knife. It's like that, no? Correctly, I think. <coughs> oh, knight C4 was played. No. Knight c4 was played, uh, black and white. I played knight d2. And uh, my opponent, Nikolic, changed on, b on d2. So, he changed on d2. So what is now? Now he has, he has a weakness on, on queen side. There are a lot of weaknesses. Uh, the white should just improve the, the, the position with pushing pawns and uh, bishops, controlling everything. The game. So, queen c7. I played a4, but maybe, maybe possible was also b4, because this is protected now, and later a4 and to attack a pawn on, on b5, simply. But I played a4. It's uh, a b4 doesn't work because I uh, know oh he did before. Yes, he played before. So I should, I should, I could prevent it playing before. But I saw that another problem is that he has uh, a6 pawn. Now he has a pawn on a6, which I, I can attack. 
and win. Now I want to play bishop a4 and bishop c6. Just to put a bishop there and then it's easy win. Technically win. He has to take on c3 and now taken by bishop. Now I take by bishop. And he played queen c4. Queen b7 would be possible, but then after queen b7, white still can play bishop a4. He cannot take, not to take by knight, and not to take by queen. Both. Important is he has not a check on e2. And if he plays e4, then queen g3, queen takes, and bishop goes back. And next move is bishop takes e4. Knight h5, just bishop e4. So. For instance, like that. Swinging this. He has to take, 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 and take. And should be lost the position. Knight is bad. Going to f5 five and later nothing. Ponsa. Rook b7, rook b6. <coughs> so, he played queen, queen b7, no, he played queen c, queen c4. He played in this position queen c4. My, my bishop is here. Oh, sorry. Knight on f6, knight on queen on f3, on knight f6, pawn here. He played queen c4, just bishop d3. Still cannot take, and so now it's interesting how we how uh, white is improving the bishops and pawns. Queen b3 is not possible, bishop takes e5 and bishop takes h7. He has to play queen, queen c5. And now rook a c1, because if rook e c1, then he can take by queen, because later he takes on c3 and can knight e2 check. So have to be careful always. Rook c1, queen a7. Yeah, bishop is on e7, sorry. So now he, if he plays with this rook, then bishop takes a6, and later bishop d2. And rook on c8 is ending. So, he played queen a7, and now finally I, I got what I want. Bishop c4, and now I, I will support my bishop from by pawn. Bishop c4, rook f c8, maybe was better a little bit to trying to play more active like knight d7 and uh, and f5 but he, but later he cannot he cannot push later points anyway but what's better knight d7 he played bishop bishops rook fc8 just b3 bishop d8 
now bishop d2 now i want to push b4 and actually what white wants white wants now to change rooks and to win a6 pawn and to win again bishop d2 g6 first queen d3 that queen not coming to d4 prevent the queen king g7 or g6 was queen, queen d6 king g7 and b4 and now simple task just to change rooks and win a pawn on a6 knight g8 wanted to improve his knight just bishop b3 now now we are ready to change everything knight e7 just technical position simply knight e7 change change and rook c1 take c1 bishop take c1 knight f5 wanted bishop h4 and just bishop is will be the best square e1 protecting both sides and a6 is still there Bishop h4, bishop e1. Knight d4, bishop c4. Maybe this is what we call a high class move. <laughs> not too easy. Bishop not, not too easy to put the bishop up. Yeah, but you no know, no bishop a6 pawn. The main thing is a6. f5 he played. If he would play queen b7, just take here, queen takes, and bishop goes back and pawns are pushing. So he played, and what he did, he played here, f5, I think, yes. f5, bishop takes. Oh, yeah. Bishop takes a6, e4, and now queen c3. Just ready to to change it, but not queen e3 because queen e3 would be knight f3. And it would be draw, you see? This would be draw. Because I'm losing a pawn. Yeah, and bishop takes. Yeah. And losing a pawn. One, and that is draw. So till the end to be very, very careful. So that is why queen c3. This queen is on a7, knight is on d4, bishop on h4, yeah? And if he plays bishop h6, then queen c8, and queen b7 next. Oh, yes. Another option would be but uh, to play another option would be to play queen c4 not but then uh, e3 he plays and then bishop c3 ef2 king f1 bishop f6 queen c8 but okay but it is simpler this because now he can he must take on a6 he must take a bishop we take here and bishop bishop f6 and just queen d1 
going queen queen b1 and and pushing the pawns queen c4 and queen b1 queen b1 and the pawns are going we cannot stop them we play the four if queen b5 then first bishop d2 just improving a little bit position and later pawns are going again so he played a four here b5 f3 b6 fg2 king g2 then queen e2 probably yes b7 queen f3 king f1 or g1 no king g1 sorry king g1 first yes king g1 first now he has to take on h3 no bishop d4 you played bishop d4 yes because there's no time bishop d4 and now queen now he has to give a check king f1 queen h3 f3 queen e2 queen f3 king d2 if now e3 if check then we go here check and now here i think yeah <coughs> queen a3 yeah just queen b2 also yes check uh, so instead of this he gave me a check queen uh, i played how it was king d2 and queen was on f3 he played this and i think king c2 now Why, what's king c2? Ah, and king c1. If queen. If queen e e4, then king c1. And that's, that's all. Now I tell you one interesting story about the same situation of this opening, or this variation. So, mm, many people some people try to play the same idea as my idea with sacrificing a pawn, like Gufeld, and one of them was uh, Grandmaster Tseszkowski. So he played, and he won even two games versus Belavsky with this variation, with White. And the year ninety, uh, the beginning of year seventy nine, we had to play a, a tie break. Uh, for qualification for international tournament, three players uh, Kuzmin, Gennady Kuzmin, Tseszkowski, and me. And Tseszkowski played the same variation with White now. So, and I had to fight with my idea. That was a not pleasant task, but I had, because I played only, only Lou Lopez. And I played that time Zaitsev variation, you know, with bishop b7, so. And now he is playing this and very successful. And what I have to do? <laughs> what I have to do now? <laughs> I have to prepare something. And I did find another idea for black. <laughs> because what, uh, what, what else? Yeah, I must do something, yeah? So, 
in this position. He played the same and was even was, I think, the first round of tie break. And oh, bishop, bishop is there. Bishop e7, queen, queen, and pawn. Bishop, this is pawn, pawn. No choice now. So and now is knight on f6. I think it's no. There is a pawn. One pawn is missing. Where is a pawn? Oh, here. Pawn and knight. Yes, knight and pawn. And he was ready to play versus me the same idea. So and. Uh, uh, I had to decide what to do, you know. But you know that even even Karpov uh, did not play. Here he played uh, c6, and after h3 he did not like. They play now. They move back bishop to c8. That's and that time nobody did do it. So and I decided, what's the idea actually? After this, you play queen c7. You don't take by. Because knight is oh knight is bishop is here because knight is important to to come to c4 to and to stop and I just uh, thought about it why not in this position why should I play c6 and after h3 have problems if I can start with move queen c8 it's actually the same almost the same the difference is that the bishop will be not immediately going to e6, but first to d7 and then to e6. But there are not all the variations and not any more knight e5, because there is a square for a bishop, d8. And I played my first game, was it Tsushkovsky? So, and we had this position, and I played here queen c8. It was also that time, you know, like this. h3. If he plays knight d2 first, for instance, and c6, and takes, then then I can go by bishop to e6 immediately. <coughs> so he played h3, and uh, just bishop d7. h3, bishop d7. Knight bd2. Knight bd2, c6. Before, you know, it, it, to play knight c4 would be very, very dangerous because he can take on c4, and then later he has to, white has to play one moment bishop g5 and take there. So, uh, knight, uh, uh, so knight c4 would not be good here. I played knight b7. And there is another idea because it's a little bit weak here. And now I bring my my to take a queen, preventing any c4, and I bring both my my knight to e6 after that. So bishop b2, he played, and knight d8. Also, bishop is on b2, it means the square is a little bit weak, f4. So, bishop d3, maybe rook, maybe was better rook c6 and bishop b1 later. But he played bishop uh, d3. Bishop d3, he wanted to push c4, 
knight e6, c4, and just moving queen to b7. And the idea is that I can bring my bishop to c6. Knight is a little bit late here. He should be already on e3 or, or c3, but it's a little bit late. And also, also before is handy. A3, knight f4, has to go here to f1, and queen rook c8 first. This one, because he cannot he cannot play g no g g3 he, he cannot play g3 because he has not not king h2 move. So. Um, uh, and otherwise it's not uh, rook c1 and now bishop c6 now he can play g3 but then he will have a lot of weaknesses there g3 and knight is going back to g6 Interesting game, yes. Because it's fight on both sides. Yes, but so e e four is ending. Anyway, e four is ending. C b five, a b five. This is not very weak pawn because uh, he cannot attack b five. E four is more important now. Bishop d3, and now the bishop, like in this, uh, in this that position, it's very often the idea to bring a bishop now to, to b6, and also knight a5 is not possible. Knight b3, knight a5 is not possible anymore. Queen e2, and bishop b6. Knight f1, he can play, then we just can stop him g6 and he never comes to, to f5. Also, he has to be f8 because you know sometimes there is a threat like knight h5 and king h2 is not, is not possible because of uh, f2. Yes, and king g2 is knight f4. So he has to. He played rook c2. Yeah. Rook c2, yes, and knight h5 now. And knight f1 probably, or what else? No, king h2, ah, no, we're still not attacking, yes. King h2 he played. King h2 and bishop d7. Now we want to change it, rook, and to take a file. Because uh, there is always a problem with some ideas with knight f4 and bishop f2. Because there is a uh, hand in everything, knight takes d3 and and taken. He play he changed the rook and played knight g1. <coughs> because some ah some ah that was another threat. You see that was a threat. Knight f4, queen f1, bishop takes h3. Another one threat. Bishop takes h3. Bishop on d7 was. He played knight g1. And uh, 
and g6. That's protecting, and that is always some threats with knight on f4. Not clear what he has to do now. White is very passive position. Yes. G6, knight f1. <coughs> and just knight d4. Knight d4. He has to, queen, to play queen d1. He cannot give up this bishop because we will not protect a3 anymore. Queen d1. And bishop e6 now from another side. Red bishop b3, knight d2, and bishop c4. We want to get a pass pawn. He cannot take. It will be very dangerous for him to take. So, because he takes, I take by pawn, bishop c3, knight b5 and attacking f2 so he played bishop b1 queen a7 now knight on, on h5 is very 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 unpleasant for it's always some some threats king g2 Knight e6. There is again f2 hanging and uh, knight f4 is also. And how to protect? Because knight uh, queen f3 is probably knight. Uh, Knight g5. And then no, then it's queen g4. Queen f queen f f3 would be possible yet. Queen f3. No, we can play knight f4 and take and take on f2 later also. Also is possible. Also we can play queen f3, we can play bishop d4. Or bishop d4 and then take by knight there are many options of course so he played what uh, he took on c4 bishop but then pawn takes I look f1, c3. Bishop c1, and knight d4. So he has to play what? Bishop, ah, queen d3. We can play still queen d3. And now, now what? Knight b3. <coughs> so pawn is hanging on a3. Queen takes d6. Knight takes, rook takes, and bishop takes f2. Knight e2. Here somewhere the game was adjourned again. Another adjournment.
1992 and it was lost by force. Bishop takes g3. Knight takes g3 and knight takes g3. King f3. Why not king? Why not queen takes e5? Queen takes e5. Why not? Ah, why king? Ah, because queen e3. Yes, right. There is red queen e3. Rook c3. Rook, why? Yeah, why? Queen e3 is rook c3. Then knight e2 maybe. Yeah, something. Yes. Knight e2, knight e4 is, is coming. Yeah. So he played king f3, preventing covering that square. But queen takes a3 now. Rook c2. And knight f1. Bishop c2. Bishop a2. Just queen a7. Defending f7. Queen e3. Queen e3 again. Yes. He played queen e5. Queen takes e5. No, queen e3 I, don't, I did not play because king g2 yeah. is going back. So I played queen d7. There is h3 and d1. Both. Oh, I, I dropped a piece somewhere. Between the chairs. Sorry? On the floor between the chairs. On the floor between the chairs? I don't see. Ah, yes. It's black. <laughs> <laughs> I could not see it. Queen d7. Queen f4. Queen d3. King g4, King g4, and Queen d1. There is mate on h5. If he goes to h4. And if he goes to, to e g5, h6 maybe. H6 then, mate, and queen, queen d8 back, and winning a queen, just winning a queen. So, that was all what I have prepared. Okay, thank you. Thank you. At least uh, what I prepared is this variation. How did it feel to play against Tal? When you sit down, weren't you a little bit afraid? No. Thanks. No. You know, I was not afraid. I was uh, more afraid when I play younger people. You know, because when I played Tal, I played Smyslov, I played uh, all ed elder players, all famous grandmaster. If if I lose, nothing happened. I just lose. It's normal. Everyone expects you to lose. Sorry? Everyone expects yes, you to yes, lose. Yes, yes, that's why I won with them. <laughs> that's, I have a, I played with Tal, I don't remember exactly, 21 or 23 games. In but you worked with him. Sorry? You worked with him, I say. I, I, I won. He was your mentor in some way. Or no, 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 no. I worked with him, yeah. but I helped him. Oh. He invited me after... The, uh, we played the Soviet Championship, 75, we shared second to fifth, and the first round was very interesting game, 
Uh, he was impressed. Maybe I show you what he was impressed exactly. Yes. He told me that he was impressed. Was it against tall or? I, against tall, yes. Yeah. Okay. So he was impressed, very impressed by one move, and then he invited me for uh, for his uh, training camp. Be he prepared Intersonal Tournament 76 in Switzerland, in Biel. And he invited me to help him for a uh, training. And uh, uh, we, we played also with him two training matches. One during that training camp, and another one we played later a little bit, few months later, before the Soviet Championship, we played he he invited me, he called me and invited me to go to Riga to play uh, four games match, another one. But in tournaments we played uh, 21 or 23 games. I'm not exactly, I, I can check it. And I won seven and lost four. Or as a were draw. Because I like to play uh, tournaments in Soviet Union, we played in Riga, in Lviv, in Lviv twice we played even, in, in Tbilisi, in Erevan, everywhere you like it to you play. Have a plus score again. Yes, I have plus score not, uh, against Tal, against Petrosian. Petrosian won three games, three and two lost. And uh, Smyslov and even Spassky. I think you have 23 games. 23, yes. Uh -huh. So if, if you walk the street here, no one knows. Sorry? If you walk on the street, no one knows this. Yes, nobody knows it. Yes, it's true. We know, we know. We know. <laughs> because Tal in that time, it was a 74 or 75, he played like 90 games without losing. Yeah, but I tell you that uh, when I played, uh, when I wa won versus uh, Petrosian, I won this. If you if you did not see it. Uh, a knight c3, b6, e4, bishop b7. Bishop d3, but the story was like that. I I played in a lot, 75, uh, when uh, I was I am, and uh, before the f last round, I shot first to third with Miroslav Filip, Czech grandmaster who played candidate tournament. Two candidate tournament he played in uh, 59 and uh, 62. Yes, and Istvan Chom, grandmaster from Hungary, who played national team, who was also second of uh, Portish many times. And we shot uh, uh, seven and a half out of ten. Uh, we shot uh, fifth, uh, the first to third. And I played with white pieces last round versus Istvan Chom. And uh, I was uh, stupid a little bit that time young and I I wanted to play to win. When I win a game, I win a tournament, I made a grandmaster norm, but a grandmaster norm would, uh, norm would be also withdraw. A little bit less, but would be accepted <laughs> maybe. I, something 8.03, something like that was a norm. So, so, but of course I should make a draw quickly. And uh, uh, John played always hedgehog, and he liked it even such positions, I remember. What his usual, with white and with black, both like that. <laughs> <laughs> he played with white and black, all the same. So, and uh, I was preparing for the game and did not know what to play here. Because the normal was uh, here, was there were d3 or queen e2, and later g3 and bishop g2. And then, just before the game, few hours before the game, I, I find the idea that maybe I can play bishop d3 and bishop c2, and then later uh, b3, bishop b2, d4, and taking on king side. But you know, in the last round, to make such a move like bishop d3, and that time, it would be very, very... Uh, very so very risky, I would say maybe so strange a little bit, and I did not play, and I played normally. I don't remember exactly what I played this three or queen e two, and I lost in thirty moves. I missed everything in this tournament. It was my first tournament with GM norm, 
so where I could make a, a norm first time and I did not do it and I lost and then I w I was analyzed all the night there then in my home trip in Barcelona two days I I analyzed only Bishop D3 I said I was so collapsed from completely you know I was 20 23 that time and that was uh, young for, because when I became a grandmaster was 24 there were about 10 11 grandmasters that age Ulf Andersen, Jan Thiemann, uh, Ribli uh, Sachs they were one year uh, elder than me uh, then uh, Lubojevich two years Mekin so not not so many uh, that age so and I made a grandmaster nominate and then I missed and then I uh, had this idea and I did not, I had once the opportunity to play it, maybe had opportunity if I would choose it. And, uh, but I played badly that tournament. And then in, uh, in December I y used it versus uh, Tigran Petrosa in, in Soviet championship no. where he lost one game, no. only to me, this one, but he was not, not, uh, uh, he was underestimated it, everything. So, oh, it and he underestimated this idea, and uh, so he played just uh, d6, uh, c5. But he uh, should play c5 immediately. And I won the game, yes. But and then because later I played something like we changed. I remember, and one moment I I played I sacrificed a knight on d5 and, and won. But it was not winning, it was close at all. But it was not, not pleasant uh, for him. Also, I could sacrifice another one uh, a knight. Because I know that, you know, the Petrosian usually, he, against such a structure, he, he plays g6, not h6, because he always thinks that uh, this uh, diagonal is more dangerous, b1 to h7. <coughs> then g this one is not so dangerous, <coughs> he thinks. And I could sacrifice another one night, but would be maybe too much. So, but I tell you because you say that nobody knows it. Yeah, because when I, uh, 20 years later, uh, 96 was Olympiad in Erevan, I uh, went to pharmacy to buy some aspirin or some medicine, and the, uh, the man there told me, oh, I know you, you cashed our Petrosan here, our Tigran, because Erevan is, uh, he was famous in Erevan, you know, because when we played the Soviet championship that time, you know, where every day were uh, 1,500, 2,000 people, mm -hmm. spectators. Mm -hmm. It was because played Petrosian and Vaganyan. And Petrosian won the tournament, Vaganyan shot second to uh, fifth with, uh, with Tal and uh, Gulko and me. So, but I wanted to tell you about uh, Ah, Tal was impressed. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Tal. Ah, so it is something already age. You know what is age? Ah, I'll be in one week seventy-two. I must tell you. Ah, just a moment. Did you ever play Fisher? No, never. Uh, he's. I never played Keres even, because Keres played last championship in the year... Mm, 74? 73. 73. Last his championship. And my first was 74. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he so died back on the way from... Uh, he, he died 75. 75. 75. Oh, yeah. 75 he died. But <coughs> 74 he did not play in the, in the championship. Yeah, he yes. I, played, I played the Kiddush Memorial in Vancouver. Oh, yeah, because he, <laughs> he, he died on the way back, like. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, just a moment. I just find what it. What was the plan? I think it was like in Helsinki. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he was in Helsinki in hospital, I think, because something was. Uh, he was bad and he died there. Yeah. Which year was he uh, born? Born? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, 16, I think. So yes. Was not so no, he was 59. Yeah. He was 59. Just a moment. Uh, mm. 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 Any good players didn't be so 
Oh. I see something about Swedish players the other day that Nivas Stolberg, Stolz. Stolz, Stolberg? Yeah, they yeah. never reach 60, any of them. Yeah. Uh, also one who got very old. But Lundin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Stalberg uh, died in Leningrad, I think, during the tournament. Yeah. So we start, we played this. It was the first round already. First round was mm, the Soviet Championship. It was our second game because we played 74 also. I had to write also. We played, I played e4, c5, knight f3, d6, bishop b5, I think. Bishop b5, knight c6, knight c6. Is this against Tau? It was against Tau. First round of Soviet Championship, my best Soviet Championship, 75, mm -hmm. actually. Bishop d7. I have seen this game. Did you? I've seen all of his games. Ah. He's my favorite player, so mm -hmm. I, I, maybe. Mm. But uh, I, may, I would say that uh, he liked it by game, my way to play, and maybe it was his problem with me, because he liked it how I'm playing. He said that I'm uh, about me that he, I'm playing tasty chess. He said. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that maybe. It was he was not successful against me because you if you Totally's if you <laughs> if you have a lot of uh, admiration for the player you cannot fight him yeah. <laughs> maybe that is a problem you always have to think your opponent is weak <laughs> so c3 ah no uh, rook a1 somehow yeah ah knight f6 was yes a6 bishop f1 e5 and I played not h3 but d4 a little bit strange too optimistic maybe cd cd bishop g4 and just bishop here I, I was ready to give up a bishop e d4 and bishop d4. But I like it to my knight to come to c3 now. He could take on d4 twice and play b. And if he takes twice and once and play bishop e7, now I can play e5 maybe immediately. and take by queen to e5. And he has to move a back bishop to e6 because he will not castle. And after bishop e6, I have knight d4. Can be a little bit unpleasant for him. But he has queen d5. After bishop d4, queen d5, I take, maybe that's something like that. Bishop e6, knight d4, queen d5, take and take by knight. But it is maybe, take on e6 may be better for me. So, but he did not play this. He, he played bishop d4, bishop e7. <coughs> this position, bishop, knight, uh, no, knight is here, bishop pawn is on d6. Pawn is on e4, bishop is on d6, knight is on c6, queen on d1. So, uh, we played bishop e7 and bishop c3. Now I save the bishop. Castle, h3, we played bishop h5. G4. Because if knight bd2, then he can play d5 immediately and d4. So g4, bishop g6. Let the game start now. 
knight h4. Now he says that d5 was better to play for him. Not not bishop d4, not bishop e4, but d5. And but he took a bishop by bishop. Then I played g5. <coughs> was for the first round was very very nice game. Bishop b1. And rook takes e7. No, because otherwise my, my knight is hanging there. Rook takes e7. Gf6 would be just uh, queen b, uh, rook b1 is knight e8. F4, d5, yes, already. My king is be open. So, and he played knight e4, the only move. Knight e4 here, the only move. Because knight d5 would be queen d5, knight e7, queen d4. That is mate on g7. So knight e7, here uh, uh, just taken on f6 and taken later on b1. So, no, queen, ah, uh, bishop, ah, uh, if he would take by knight, then I would take, and now queen g4. There is a problem with the bishop. And taking g7 and knight f5 later on. Ah, bishop is not coming. So, and he played knight e4 here. After rook e7, knight e4. Knight e4. Rook b7. A knight c5. You're playing against Hull like this. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I would lose to him, uh, it's nothing. Nobody would say me anything. Nobody would blame me. So what's no? No, what do you blame? Okay. My, when I was playing the said, tournament Bishop D3 with Petrosan, because you know the Soviet Union, they were on the news, uh, TV news every day, all the all the results of the championship, and my mother didn't want to watch it because she was sure that I will lose to Petrosan. So it's clear. So <laughs> no, it's just so nobody would say something. Knight c5. Now he should play maybe knight, or he could play mm, queen g5 immediately here. Queen g4, taken on g4, and taken on c3 later. Like it would be this draw, like that. Go here, take, take, take here, take, and go with the bishop back, I think. And it's like equal. I have compensation for a pawn because take on one, but it's not not so much. So and and but he did not do it. He played knight c5, what was not good for him. He played knight c5. What is bishop on c3? Bishop is on c3. No other pawns, no. G5 is pawn, yes. G5 is pawn. He played uh, knight c5. Rook b1, just. Just rook b1. He played bishop, queen takes g5. And what he told me that he was very impressed by this move. Queen g4. Just changing the uh, queens. Despite I am I am exchange and pawn down. But first of all, I am not losing time for something like knight g2 or uh, and that's one thing. Another thing I improve my my pawns and my uh, my 
my bishops are very strong. So queen g, he must take, I take, <coughs> he must take my rook, and I think I played bishop g2 or what? Bishop g2, queen g5. Ah, no, no, sorry, excuse me. I played bishop g2, and after he took, now in this position I played queen g4. In this position I played queen g4. Not losing the time for moving the knight somewhere to f3. Here I played queen g4. But it would be the same, I think, if I would play immediately, because there is no other option. And uh, queen g4, he has to take on g4, and I take my pawn by pawn. And I have a threat, knight f5, and I have a threat after f6, I have g5 always, because my pawn is much better. And if he plays rook c8, knight f5 with also threat uh, bishop c6. Except of this, he played. He had to move a knight to d8 now. I mean, his rook is still there. Knight d8, he played. I played knight f5, f6, and I played g5. Knight e 7 was not enough. Knight e7, he would take, I take a rook, then he goes to c6, and my bishop is starting there. g5. g7 is a weakness. Rook a7. <coughs> he cannot take bishop d5, rook f7, knight d6. It's, it's terrible then. So he played uh, rook a7, protecting. g7, bishop d5, king h8, taking on f6, okay. rook e1, <coughs> yes, ridiculous knights, <laughs> both, both. And there's a 4, knight d5 is a 4. He played h5, yes, because he makes a knight square for, makes a space for, for king. h5, f4, king h7. And now I missed a little bit, yes, I made a nice move, rook e3, but much better was king f2. The same idea, but also king is better. There is not... The king was wrong here. I played rook e3, that was a mistake. If I would play king f2, I have very good chances to win this game. Really, he has terrible pieces. And then except instead of this, I played rook e3. And he played king g6. King g6. Knight h4, and king goes back. I still didn't want to make a draw. I wanted still to play, gave him check. King g8, and I played knight f5. And he played rook d7. If he would play here, rook e8, I can take, takes, check, rook here, knight d4, rook e7, f5 later, winning a piece. So he played here, what he did, eight, no, rook d7, yeah, wants to play d5. He wants to play d5. I have to give a check him. 
still try to play a little bit before. King g6, knight h4, king h7, bishop e4, king g8, bishop d5, king h7, and then I tried to play knight g6 here. But he played d5. Very good move. I had to take, and he took my king. Rook d3. Rook g7. And I think accepted a draw. Yes. Rook g7 and. So funny game, just bishop g2 now, yeah? Bishop g2, knight e6, bishop d2, simply protected. Very strong bishops, yeah. Straw. Bishop d2, then he can play knight d4, king f1, and so on. Later on d5, I will take back again. In this game, you played the... Not so much theory, you know, you just played. You know, there were not so much theory that time at all. You could come to the game, think a little bit, and to make some moves. <laughs> yes, <laughs> okay, but was, what was the preparation, actually? Chess Informant, Encyclopedia of Chess Openings, and what you did see somewhere. You know that time, the mostly the, you, that you could, you could learn something. What's wrong? I think uh, maybe it's uh, no. a small mistake. <laughs> no. You know, you, you could learn when you, are, when you are playing tournaments, you meet people, you analyze with them, you talk with them, and then you, you know something, because there were not so many, many uh, materials. Uh, you, some chess magazines, but uh, all, all it was always late, late a little bit. Chess in, Yugoslavian chess informant, when we traveled, I had always few chess informants. When I went to the Soviet championship, I also had with me five volumes of uh, encyclopedia of chess openings by chess informant Yugoslavia, but only inside the Soviet Union because the, the over luggage was uh, very cheap. And if you go outside, it's, it will be very expensive to, to take all the books. That was all, yes, and not, not computers. Pre, pre computer mm, era was, I think. How many yeah. times did you play in Sweden? Me? Uh, it is my sixth time to Sweden. Mm. Can you tell about that? Sorry? Which year was the first time? The first I played 71. My, it was my second tournament abroad at all. I played in Göteborg. In Göteborg, I played uh, in the tournament. Was nice. The, the first, second were Hort and uh, Anderson. Third was uh, Spassky, world champion that time, mm -hmm. seventy one. Fourth was last was Sabo. I was fifth, uh, and then were Istvan Bilek, then master from Hungary, then played. Uh, mm, uh, uh, Pomar, Arturo Pomar. Yes, uh, then played Nona Gaprindashvili. There were two world champions, uh, men and women. Nona I lost to Gaprindashvili with white, by the way. Yes, Janssen, uh, he was a policeman, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, policeman. Yeah, he's still living. Yeah, still then uh, Chernyak from Israel, and uh, I think Lilia Dahl, mm -hmm. and, and one uh, more uh, Kinmark or something like that. Yes. Yes, yeah. that was 70. Was Seven for you, for Papa, she had uh, it was 71. Was then I played. For you, for Papa, she had no. Okay. 
And then I played in the year 80. We played in Stockholm, Rokaden. Where is Rokaden? It yeah, was European, remember, remember. European Club Cup. December was very cold. I remember it was incredibly cold. Minus 15 or something. Then we played 86. Also, I played for versus Rokaden again. Yeah, you won 9-3. I was... Yeah. Uh, I was not a player, but uh, I helped with the uh, demonstration. A uh, year in 1980, I played in Stara, the team championship, yeah. Yeah. Uh, U U U U European team championship. And 93, I played in Miami, round robin tournament. 93. Was it uh, Sigeman, no? Uh, it was no. Yes, it was Sigeman. Sigeman. It was Sigeman. <coughs> okay. yeah. No, it was not open. It was closed. Yeah, closed, yeah. Yes. Who won that tournament? Who won? Yeah. <sighs> Hard to say. I don't remember exactly. I know that I lost to Margaret Patterson. Who? Margaret Patterson. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have equal score. We played uh, because you know he's living in Lviv now. Yeah. In Ukraine, yes. He played My Rilton last year. Sorry? He played Rilton 22, yes, 23. Yes. Yes, uh, so and who, who won the tournament? I don't remember. Oh, I just take a look in my games and then maybe I, I remember who could win the tournament. Mm -hmm. If I see all my games, that were my games. Let me see. Do you remember?